Greetings. This is the piece I'll be making in this video, a hexagonal Asanaha coaster. As you can see by the dimensional diagram, the pitch of the kumiko is 60 millimeters, and all kumiko, including the Asanaha pattern pieces, have a mitske of 4 millimeters. Initially, I was planning to make the hexagonal piece that I teach students in my intermediate workshops but I thought it would be better to start on the basics of the mitsukure, or three-way joint, so that you can fully grasp the concept and how it works. And what better way to do this than with a coaster and the attractive hexagonal asanoha? This is the first pattern I cover in Book 3, and this combination of the mitsukure and asanoha forms the basis for many other patterns. The intermediate piece will have to wait for the next video. The concept of the mitsukure is quite simple. There are two types of joints. The first I call the A joint for the A kumiko, and the second, surprisingly, is the B joint for the B kumiko. These are all cut at 60 degrees. For the A kumiko, you first cut down to a depth of two thirds at this 60 degree angle. Then flip the kumiko around and cut down to a depth of two thirds over the same joint at the opposing 60 degree angle. For the B kumiko, you cut down to a depth of one third at this 60 degree angle then flip the kumiko over and again cut down to a depth of one third at the same angle. And you need two A kumiko for every one B kumiko. It's really that simple. So first things first, set the sliding bevel gauge to 60 degrees. The easiest way I've found is to set it against the left end stop and tighten. Provided your jig is accurate and the end stop is exactly 60 degrees, the bevel gauge will also be exactly 60 degrees. We only need three joints, so place three marks at 60 millimetre intervals. Make sure the intervals are exactly the same. If you remember in my framed Asanoha video, I mentioned that with the square jigumi, as long as you're consistent with the layout and assembly, top, bottom, left, right, any small inaccuracies won't overly affect the piece. Unfortunately, that's not the case with the mitsukure joint and the hexagonal jigumi. If you're not 100% accurate with your marking, the jigumi won't come together and you'll have pieces snapping all over the place. And don't forget to include the pencil marks. Before you do anything else, trim one end of all of your kumiko, including the story stick, to a point on the 60 degree jig. This gives you a flat face to secure against both end stops of your cutting jigs. This will help your accuracy, and if you do this, you'll certainly thank me later. As with the framed square asanoha, the first step is to transfer the marks from the story stick so place one A and one B kumiko in the 60 degree kumiko cutting jig along with the story stick. Place the A kumiko next to the story stick and the B kumiko closest to you. You'll understand why later. Secure the story stick and the kumiko in the jig by screwing in a 4mm kumiko support piece. Because we'll be cutting at an angle, the hatagane clamps we used in the 90 degree kumiko cutting jig would continually get in the way. Once you've checked that they're all against the end stop, screw the support piece in fully to secure the story stick and master kumiko firmly in place. Transfer the marks from the story stick to the two master kumiko in the normal way.
And don't forget your pencil marks. Next, loosen the support screws. Don't take them out, just loosen them. Flip the B Kumiko, and only the B Kumiko, over. You should still see the story stick marks and the marks you just made on the A Kumiko. Once you're satisfied they're again firmly up against the end stop, retighten the support screws. Now carefully transfer the marks across to the B Kumiko. You've already marked the A Kumiko, so take your mark from that. This is the easiest way to mark this single Kumiko, and this is why you secured the B Kumiko closest to you in the jig. These marks are for the joints on the underside of the B Kumiko. And don't forget those pencil marks. Remove the story stick and the Master B Kumiko and secure the Master A Kumiko and five other Kumiko in the jig. When you're satisfied the ends are firmly against the end stop, tighten the support screws. Next, extend the marks across all Kumiko as normal. Cut down on each of the marks as normal to a depth of two thirds. Mark the other edge of each of the joints and cut down two thirds. Now remove the waist. And place a pencil mark to indicate the left hand end. This next process is a critical part where we'll be marking the opposing angle, so you should follow along carefully. Remove all of the kumiko from the left hand end stop. If necessary, adjust your sliding bevel gauge so that it is now at the correct angle. If you can use your gauge on both sides, you don't need to do this. Flip all the kumiko around so they are now firmly against the right hand end stop. I like to keep the kumiko in the same order so the master kumiko is always against the side support. When you're satisfied they're firmly against the end stop, tighten the support screws. Now flip the entire jig around so that the end stop with the kumiko is on your left 
and the side support is facing you. What you now have to do is place the bevel gauge so that it cuts the left edge of the joint at the centre line of the kumiko. The knife here shows where the knife mark will go. This diagram also shows where the bevel gauge sits and where the mark is placed. Note that the end stop should be on your left and the side support faces you. Now mark across the kumiko as shown in the diagram. Why flip the jig around for these first marks? When you made your very first marks on the master kumiko, the accurate mark from the story stick was on the end stop end with a 60 degree point. That was the accurate mark and cut. The other edge of the joint was based on judgment, so not as accurate. You are therefore using the accurate side of the joint to place these marks. If it's confusing, go back to the start of the video and check which side the very first accurate marks were made. The next step is to cut the joints and remove the waste. These are not the easiest of cuts and when making the cuts be careful because the saw will want to fall into the joint opening. Just make sure you keep the saw blade perpendicular and apply a slight amount of side pressure to prevent the saw from falling in. Next, mark the other edge of the joints in the normal way and cut down. Again, being careful so that the saw blade doesn't fall into the joint opening before completing the cut. The extensions past the end joints will be 8mm, so the final step for the A Kumiko is to mark 9mm past the end joints at both ends and cut. And that completes the A Kumiko. Next we move on to the B Kumiko. Secure the master B Kumiko and two other Kumiko in the left hand 60 degree cutting jig. Then extend the master Kumiko marks across the other Kumiko as normal. Set the marking gauge at 4mm and mark each of the joints. This is one third depth and you'll cut down to this line. Next cut down to the 4mm line. Make sure you don't go past this line otherwise you'll weaken the joint. Now mark and cut the other side of the joint. This is no different from the cuts for any other joint, except you only cut down the 4 millimetres.
When removing the waste for these joints, you can use a piece of scrap chemical as a backing support to help prevent any damage to the joint from the chisel. This is more important when working with much thinner chemical, but here it just gives that extra bit of support. Now repeat that exact same process. Flip the Kumiko over and secure in the jig. Again, I like to keep the Kumiko in the same order with the master Kumiko against the side support. And make sure the ends are firmly up against the end stop. Extend the marks from the master Kumiko across all the other Kumiko. Mark down 4mm with the marking gauge. Cut down to the 4mm line. Mark and cut the other side of the joint. And remove the waste. Finally, place a pencil mark to ensure consistency on the side that faces upwards. This is where we finish off the kumiko so they're ready for assembling. Cut the B kumiko to 9mm past the end joints as was done with the A kumiko. Cut off the end joints on 4 A kumiko and 2 B kumiko so there are only two joints. Trim the ends of all kumiko to 8mm and lightly chamfer the end edges. Don't worry about the tops as yet. It's now time to assemble the Kumiko. The extensions are the weakest part, so add extra glue in the end joints. If the joint feels at all tight, tap the kumiko in with a hammer and tapping block, rather than using your fingers and thumbs. And that's the hexagonal jigumi finished. And at last, on to the asanoha pattern. This asanoha is without doubt one of the simplest patterns to make. There's only one kind of pattern piece, and there are three identical pieces in each triangle. One end is trimmed on the 30 degree jig, 
and the other end on the 60 degree jig. The dimensional diagram shows that the pattern piece is 30.6 millimetres long, but this should only be used as a guide. The way I work with the Asanoha and many of the other simple patterns is that I cut all of the pieces I need, which is 18 for this project, to the same length of about 1.5 millimetres over length, or 32 millimetres here. I trim one end first on the 30 degree jig to a set number of shavings. Here this was 15 or 16 on each side. This way all pieces are still the same length when I finish the 30 degree end. I then trim on the 60 degree jig with a set number of shavings. Here this was 12 on each side. The pieces are still all the same length after this and I only need one or two adjustment shavings on the 60 degree jig for a firm fit. I've been doing this for years and personally I find it much easier and faster than using stop blocks on the jigs. The Asanoha looks its most attractive when the three pieces that fit together are the same length, so you should aim for this in each triangle. Insert two pieces with the 30 degree ends in the corners and the 60 degree ends joining in the centre of the triangle. Try to fit the third piece. This one was still a fraction too long, so a single shaving adjustment for each piece was all that was needed resulting in a nice firm fit. Add a dab of glue to two corners and reinsert the pieces. Swipe a dab of glue in the opening and in the corner in much the same way as for the locking piece in the square asanoha. Then insert the third piece. Continue until all the pieces have been inserted and the pattern is completed. Pattern completed. The final step is to clean up the face of the coaster, then place a slight chamfer on the top of each of the extensions to finish up the project. The main aim of this video was to explain the concept of the Mitsukure joint and how it all fits together. And in the process we end up with a coaster. The hexagonal jigumi opens up an amazing world of fascinating patterns and I hope this video has helped to make that world a little bit closer. Thanks for watching.